Hello and welcome to the Tarkus Zone. Thank you for joining me. Today we're going to be talking about the game Diablo 4 and some advice that I have for newer players. And I've just got some uh, cinematic uh, footage going on in the background. And my list today for you is going to be really short, so this video should be a little short. So let's just talk about the first thing that when you're advancing in the game you're gonna well when you first start playing the game you're gonna be able to go into a world tier one and world tier two my advice to you is if you're just trying to slug through the campaign to get the world tier three which is where you're gonna get most of your epic drops or best in slot gear then i would suggest steering completely away from tier two don't bother. I mean, yes, you're going to get more experience. The The difficulty, you know, the difficulty offsets that a little bit. The bosses are a little harder. The mobs are a little tankier uh, in Tier 2. And it just seems like you can just grind through Tier 1 real quick. And the, the, the added bonuses you get for doing the Tier 2 content just don't make sense. Because you can do the campaign so quickly and gain so many more levels, I think, more efficiently in Tier 1. So that's my advice to you is, unless you want a hardcore experience, not the hardcore mode, but a harder core experience, and go to Tier 2. If you're one of those people that say, I want to play the game on the hardest difficulty, then that's where you want to be, is in the Tier 2 until you get to Tier... until you unlock Tier 3 world. So that's my first little bit of advice there. Uh, the potions... Always upgrade, get to the potion vendor and upgrade those potions as often as, as quickly as you can. I think it starts at like level 10. You can do the first unlock to get from four to five potions. As the game gets progressively harder, as you slog through it, you're gonna, those potions are going to be needed. You know, my, my build, my um, uh, paladin or my my barbarian build you know i always want to think about my paladin when it comes to world of warcraft but my uh, barbarian build he's tanky he, he kind of heals himself and i actually scale my play on how many potions i do not take so when i do a dungeon i give myself props if i've never needed to use a potion through the whole dungeon because of the way i built my character so that's my benchmark is not using potions but you're going to use them uh, especially if you're a DPS squishy class. So make sure you upgrade those timely. Okay, so what's the next thing you want to do? Oh, you always want to take abilities that are unstoppable and give you some immunity to break CCs. CC is important. You know, it's used in both the mobs and the player. Use the, they're both a uh, yin and yang. But you don't want to be caught in a boss CC or you don't want to be caught in a mob CC where they just overwhelm you. They're crowd controlling you. So make sure you have some ability in your tool set that gives you un unstoppable um, or immune to, to certain uh, uh, fu CC functions in the game. I, I know like Berserk. Uh, is one of those things for me as a berserker. If I go into berserk, I'm pretty much unstoppable. I can't be CC'd. I can just move around. Now, with dazed in this game, you can't cast while dazed. You can't do a, a, offensive attacks while dazed. But I believe you can still move around while dazed. So that's a CC that is manageable. But there are some CCs in this game that will lock you tight. And the mobs will just overwhelm you. Or the boss will just one-shot you. So you want some sort of ability in your tool set. That gives you unstoppable uh, way way to uh, uh, to do that. Um, so what else? Uh, we also want to talk about stunning. Uh, the stunning of bosses. You can't really stun bosses in this game. If you've got if you got abilities that do stun or some sort of uh, even taunts, I'm told uh, they have no effect on the boss or some bosses. Uh, and you you think you're wasting or you have wasted abilities set up in your in your rotation. Uh, that don't affect the boss. But actually, they do. They affect them in a different way. The boss can be staggered. So the more are those unique abilities that would normally fire against a normal uh, uh, monster, like a stun, uh, does affect the boss. It just doesn't affect it as a, uh, as a stun. It just kicks that stun. Uh, staggered meter up so that when the b boss can be staggered and what I mean by staggered once they go into the stagger phase that's when you unlock unload everything on the boss because it's on its back just can't do nothing it's just twitching on its back and then you've got maybe five or five to eight seconds where you just unload on it 
So yeah, those effects do add up uh, on the boss encounter. It's just that they, they add up in a different way. Okay, what else do I got here on my list? Uh, do oh try not to skip events as you're moving through the world you, you roll upon events well there's two big advantages to events that you can do in the in Diablo is one the event give you rewards and experience and number two normally at these events is other players and you get experience boosts or reward boosts when there's other players in the vicinity of you so it's it just it's a it's a win win kind of thing. So don't skip events. If you see them popping, you'll see them on your map. You'll see circles, or or there'll be some sort of indication that an event's happening, and you should go up and help mop up the event. Um, do not ignore your class related quests. So when each class has their own related uh, related quest line, make sure you knock that off those as soon as possible. So if you've got a quest specific, like a barbarian specific quest you got to do, do it ASAP, get it done so you can move on with your class quests. Those are another things that I uh, wanted to uh, talk about. Oh, and also when it comes to early um, play time, you're not going to need a lot of gold. So I do not suggest selling your items. I, wouldn't, I didn't have to sell any of my items when I played the alpha and beta. What I did is I salvaged them for their components so that I could enhance other items that I had on me. So that's my suggestion to you. You'll have enough gold. And plus, there was not really anything that I really needed to buy outside updating uh, uh, potions and whatnot. There was not a lot of things that I needed to uh, spend money on because I was the items being dropped in the world seemed to be what I needed at the time. So it's not like I went to the vendor looking to buy stuff. I It dropped nice for me. So I basically all my, when my uh, inventory got full, I just go over and have it all salvaged at the blacksmith guy. As it comes to potions, going back to the potions, the potion person also sells potions that you should use because some of those potions give you experience boosts. So when, you po when you're dealing with the potion NPC, look in the inventory and see if you can buy those, those potions. Sometimes they have, a, they have a unique ability that they give you, but in addition to that ability, it gives you XP bonuses. So you might want to consider using those. Uh, so the other thing about it is, and I think this is going to be the last thing that I'm going to put in this video, is when you get into the game, hit escape and go to gameplay section. It's going to be at the top of the window. So it's going to, it's just going to be um, gameplay. And in the list under gameplay, you're going to see two things. One's going to be advanced tooltip compare and advanced tooltip information. What you want to do is click those, turn those on. If you're new to this game and you're probably watching my channel, you are because not a lot of people are going to come to a channel like mine for, you know, if they're advanced at the game, they go to, you know, higher end streamers. Um, but, you know, it is what it is, <laughs> you know. So most people that watch my content is new, to, like a pleb like me is new to the game. Uh, we don't know much about it. We're just getting into it now. We're not experts at it. I'm not an expert at it. So turning on the tooltip is my recommendation, turning those two tooltips on. And again, one's called um, Advanced Tooltip Compare and Advanced Tooltip Information. All right, I think I, I got most of my list done, uh, and I think uh, that's a pretty good list to start. If you're, if you're looking for advice on day one, that's it. I, I mean, I've played enough of the game to tell you that it's very enjoyable. It's definitely enjoyable playing with friends. So that would be, I guess this is my last tip for you, is play with somebody. Find somebody that's, that you like hanging around with and play with them. And go run the world either with a four-person team or a two-person team. You just have a better time. You get through the content quicker. There's something to experience with another person, especially if they're on Discord talking with you. So you, you, the experience of being shared amongst your friend. So I would suggest, and even if you don't have any friends in this world, you don't have Discord, if you see people running around in the world, just try to piggyback on top of them. Now, they'll give you indications or they'll say something in chat that they don't want you around, fine. But most, in most cases, they welcome you being there because they're getting an XP boost and you're helping them. So that's what's nice about Diablo 4 is they do a, a kind of a pairing system when you get close to other people. 
So that that kind of works out. And uh, some people like to be uh, lone wolves and they just want to be left alone. And I understand that. I run a barbarian build. I run a shout build. I use a, I do a support build. So I was running around going to events to events, the world events I was talking about. I was popping over on them all the time and working as a group. So most of my main play was is buffing people during those events. And those events were, are fantastic, especially the world boss event where you kill the world boss you know that's where a barbarian really shines when you're you're enhancing a, a a larger group of people all right well that's it folks i hope this uh this video finds you well and i hope to see you in a few days when the game relaunches the game launches for the two upper digital packs on the first and then it launches for the standard edition on the fifth late day on the fifth technically they call it the sixth but you know I had an, I have another video that ex explains that, and I can uh, link that um, in the bottom uh, in the comments below where you can find that video when everything actually starts. All right. Well, thank you for joining me. This is Ben, the Tarkus Zone.